So after our awe-inspiring results against Manchester City, where we we performed a similar result against Arsenal, um, we are now on 35 points and very much in the relegation dogfight. Many thought 35 might be enough to keep us up. I think the magical 40 is why we should always aim. Um, but ultimately, we find ourselves very much in the thick of it now with three games to play. I thought it'd be sensible to pause and reflect and look at the teams around us to see what potentially could and might happen. So if we start at the very bottom, West Brom have got 28 points, having played 36 games. Two games left. I think their mini revival is too late and they are now very much down. Stoke got a very credible result over at Liverpool where they drew 0-0. They've played 36, so they've got two games left and they have 30 points. Now, quite important games that they've got to play is against Palace and also Swansea. And Swansea very much in the thick of it. Swansea got two key games coming up, but I think Stoke have left it again a little bit too late. So I would say Stoke are also going to be relegated. It's the third from bottom place that does worry me. Southampton, if they hadn't have beaten Bournemouth over the weekend, probably would now be on the on the hinge of going down. However, they've got to play Swansea and they also have got to play Everton and they've also got to play Man City. Having seen Manchester City play, I think we shouldn't be too concerned about Southampton picking up a result against them. But the key fight for them will be against Swansea. Palace seem to have got themselves out of it very much so with that 5-0 win. And again, that is a game that Southampton potentially could win. Swansea, we've mentioned, they have got to play Stoke. They have got to play Southampton and they also have to play Bournemouth. I think Swansea potentially will get themselves out of this. I can see them getting a the result against Bournemouth. That will put them above West Ham because they would be on 36 if West Ham don't pick up a win against Leicester City. Huddersfield have got a very, very tough run in and everyone's sort of looking at them potentially occupying that third from bottom spot. They've got Chelsea, they've got Arsenal and they've got Man City. Got a very good manager, but that is a tough run in. So they clearly will be in the mix there. Let's sort of cast our attention just above us before we talk about West Ham. Brighton have done a very good job. They've got 37 points. I think that's going to be enough to keep them up. They knew they had a tricky run in with Man United uh, and also Liverpool to play. They could potentially could afford to lose both those games. So well done, Brighton. Let's talk about West Ham. 35 from 35. They've got three games to play. The home games are Man United and Everton and the away game is Leicester City. Leicester City are on a really bad run at the moment and that is really where we need to try and pick up a point or a win. What worries me is Moyes will set us up for a point and that potentially means we will lose. Um, it also worries me with the issues with Andy Carroll because I would have loved to have seen Carroll and Arnie up front and really going for this game because it's a must-win game. Um, we shouldn't take away the fact that Leicester won the title several years ago, um, but this is a game that's very winnable and really it's where we can put ourselves clear of all of these issues and the bunch around us. However... I'm a bit less optimistic about getting something there. I can't see us being man, beating Man United at home. It's going to come down to Big Fat Sam on the last game of the season. And he's going to be pivotal to what happens because don't forget, his team are also playing Southampton. So unfortunately, Big Fat Sam will love this and it could potentially go down to the wire. So in summary, do I think we're going to go down? Potentially not but we need to get a result and not rely on results around us. Focusing our attentions to David Moyes and the position there. If he keeps us up, well done, David. You walk away with your £2 million bonus. But for those that want a new manager, and I am one of those, um, we really need to sound out some of the names that have been linked to us. Rafa ultimately is target number one. There is also a job going at Arsenal. If I was Rafa, I know where he'd want to go. Brendan Rodgers, does he want a project from Scotland and come down to the Premiership? I don't know. What I do know is money talks. And ultimately, if there's a five million buyout for uh, Rafa, then let's pay it because that's less than Jordan Hugill's uh, transfer fee. Cannot even say his name, but who is he? I don't know. But anyway, we need to sound these people out. If there's no intention of coming to us, then ultimately it looks like David Moyes will secure a job for next year. 
This slightly worries me because I don't see his football being entertaining and I also see us being in a similar position to last year if he remains at the helm. What I will say to David Moyes is well done for the backroom staff that you've brought in. Irving, McKinley and Pierce are highly thought of amongst the club officials and also the players. I think if Slavin Bilic had rearranged his backroom staff and been less stubborn, he would have found himself in a job this year. But sadly, he refused to do that. Um, I also take my hat off to David Moyes for the work he's done with Arnie because he's clearly proved to be a fantastic signing for the club and really come into his own when he's been playing up top. But personally, I would love to see a change and clearly some of the names that are being touted around are highly credible managers. So let's go after them and see if we can get one of them at the helm for West Ham. Come on, you Irons. I hope we get our future sorted out before the Everton game, but I clearly do have views that it will go down to the wire. Thank you.